Good evening, good citizens of East Coast GRC and Fengshan SMC. I love you guys. In our walkabouts in Badok and Sime, I made it a point to greet and shake the hands of young people and children. Many of them will look surprised. Some will be very shy and they will say, but I cannot vote. I wanted to tell them, you are the reason why I'm doing this. I'm fighting this good fight, not that I, but so that our children can have a better life. The PAP is campaigning on their track record this election. They have indeed done a good job in creating a better life for Singaporeans. I am a beneficiary of the nation-building efforts of our founding political leaders. But something changed in the last 20 years. The PAP today is not the PAP of the early decades. What our founding political leaders did right was to turn a colonial metropolis into a city we can call, call home. Singaporeans could afford homes, be secure in their jobs, raise their families without stress, enjoy town facilities for their everyday life, identify and be proud of their town. Then in the 1990s, something changed. The PAP introduced privatization and market forces began to dominate our lives. We became a global city with fancy skyscrapers flooded by foreign talents and luxury cars, and our cost of living shot through the roof. Singaporeans are told today by our current leaders that it is all our fault because we are not hungry enough. When we gave feedback to them, our current leaders would scold us for complaining too much and told us to be grateful for what we have. This is why we have to oppose the 6.9 million population plan. It is a plan to continue with the global city model and foreign talent focus. The Workers' Party wants to revive Singapore as a home city again. A home city is where families can afford HDB flats again. We are calling for the prices of BTO flats to be delinked from land costs and pegged to the median income of applicants. Homeowners will only need to pay about 25% of their monthly salary for 20 years, not 25 to 30 years, to own a home. We are also calling for the government to revive our town centres with hawker centres, coffee shops, HDB shopping plazas and shop houses with low rents and diverse retail mix. The PAP must understand that these places do not just provide provide for food and services. These are also places our children grow up with and in. These are places our children will fight and make up with their friends. They will fall in love and get heartbroken in these places. They will spend quality time with us parents. These are parents, these are places where our cherished memories of love and life are burned into the concrete. When we visit the Block 216, Block 58 and Block 16 markets in Bedok, we often meet former Bedok residents now living in Tampines, Pongo and elsewhere. They travel all the way back here in Bedok to have coffee, to meet with old friends and to relive their memories regularly. They apologise to us when we shake their hands, saying that they can't vote for the Workers' Party. The workers party. I wanted to tell them, no, thank you. Thank you for continuing to keep these places alive by coming back with your chatter, your laughter and memories. We are proud of our global city. We are proud of our global city, but we also want a home city that is not dominated by the market logic. We want a home city that is filled with the human touch and the warmth of the Singaporean spirit. The PAP's population policy is a recipe for overdevelopment. In order to keep up with high economic growth, the PAP intends to use 10 of the 14% of the total land area kept in reserve today in the next 15 years. We will end up only with 4% land reserves in 2030. This means we are not leaving much behind to our children. 
Our precious natural and cultural heritage will have to be sac sacrificed. This is the trade-off. Singaporeans will need to surrender our land reserves and our heritage so that the elites can have their shining global city. I think this is a very bad deal. In their population policy, the PAP proposes to invest and build ahead to accommodate 1.5 million more people, mostly foreigners. I was very frustrated when I read this in 2013. With the introduction of BTO in the early 2000s, the PAP refused to build ahead to accommodate tens of thousands of Singaporean couples who were in the long queues to buy HDB flats so that they can start a family. Our lower birth rates is partly caused by the longer wait for BTO flats. Now, instead of empowering Singaporeans to start families, the PAP is trying to solve the problem they have caused in the first place by building ahead to accommodate more immigrants, foreigners. I do not understand the logic. The PAP can build ahead for one million foreigners, but you cannot build ahead for 10,000 of your own people. <laughs> Our population policy must focus on Singaporeans and Singaporeans first. And the reason is very simple. We must do this for our children, to leave a sustainable Singapore for them. I want our children to be able to roam Singapore to discover our heritage and appreciate our cultural and natural heritage in person, not just hang out in crowded shopping malls with air condition and bright lights and never see the blue sky. <laughs> My fellow Singaporeans, Mr. Ng Eng Hen says that the PAP will work with you to find a balance that Singaporeans can live with. The PAP wants to find a balance. I agree, we need a balance, and this is what we will do, the Workers' Party MPs, will do if elected into, the, into Parliament. We will represent you, the people, and work with the government to find a balance. But we will not just seek a balance. We will not just seek a balance that Singaporeans can live with, can just tahan. We live only once, our life is too short, too special, and we should not be just barely tolerable. The population policy balance should not be just whether we can tahan or cannot tahan the foreigners living with us. Singaporeans need to be empowered to thrive, and the foreign workers and talents should empower us to thrive. We must leave a real legacy to our children, where our children will remain the majority in our country, and continue to be masters of our own country and not be treated as lesser talents who are not hungry enough. My family, my family moved out of our Pongo flat in June and our boy misses our two Indian neighbour families very much, especially the four kids he used to run around and play with along the corridor. We call the corridor Sesame Street. One of the Indian neighbours is what the PAP likes to call foreign talent. To my family, they are simply Auntie Dipti and her family. They open their home and their hearts to us, and we open ours to them. They've been learning how to be more Singaporean while we learn more about Indian culture. They even went to the Workers' Party rally at Pongo East to learn about Singapore politics. Yesterday, my wife brought my boy to visit and play with the kids again on Sesame Street. Dipti cooked puri and chicken curry for my wife to bring back so that I can eat something after the Aljunit rally. I was hungry and it was delicious, so thank you, Dipti. I remember when I wore my army uniform to go for NS men's service and walked past the Our population policy must be geared towards this outcome. The balance should not be that Singaporeans tahan foreigners and foreigners tahan Singaporeans. Just so that a small elite can earn millions of dollars and we all hope for some kind of trickle down. We are a cosmopolitan people. We are an immigrant nation. And the balance should be on focusing on Singaporeans first and integrating foreigners who have come to love us so that they can also empower us. My fellow Singaporeans, I want my boy and our children to grow up in a Singapore 
where Singaporeans welcome foreigners into our home city and our homes because the foreigners respect and love us too. I want a Singapore where my boy and our children are inspired to aspire, filled with courage to go out into the world as foreign talent themselves, and empowered to persevere to, rely, to realize their dreams. I want an economy where my boy and our children find dignity and fulfillment in their work, learn from their foreign counterparts, not replaced by them, and are empowered to strive for global leadership in their fields. I want a compassionate society where my boy will return home to visit his old but healthy papa, who is not treated as a burden and a problem, but as a fountain of wisdom and experience appreciated by the young. You may say, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope, I hope in two days you will join us and Singapore can be as one. Empower your future. Vote Workers' Party. Thank you.